lots and lots, hundreds of wonderful things in, in, in that short film. And I'm just going to summarize um, a short list of them. Uh, and this, to me, is the key one. Um, always in search of a new page. What, what I'm going to show you um, for the rest of this talk is, is a bunch of press ads. Um, I don't need to get too hung up on that. It, it, the principles apply to anything. So, you know, they, they apply to digital work, anything, um, film even. The, the most important thing that he, he said, the most important point, was that always try and do something fresh and interesting. Um, I've certainly followed that principle uh, throughout most of my work. Okay, next, next slide. I'd stay through the night, he said, if you don't agree with that. Um, I've certainly done that. Um, the principle here is you have to work hard. If you want to get good at anything, um, you, have to put, you have to put the hours in. And uh, he did. The, uh, there's this thing that's going around at the moment, there's this theory. that If you spend 10,000 hours practicing something, you become very good at it. And, um, well, I'm pretty sure I've done at least 10,000 hours trying to be an art director and um, become reasonably good at it. And uh, it's a really important principle. You've got to work hard. Uh, next slide, please. And then he said something that certainly not many art directors these days might say. Um, I've always loved wonderful copy. If you look at the um, at advertising festivals, uh, DNAD, can. Uh, look at the winners, um, certainly in the press advertising section. Um, there's very little copy. And I, I wonder whether that's a good, such a good thing. It's certainly fashionable, and it certainly helps ads work internationally. But I wonder, and, and, and there are wonderful ads in that kind of genre, but I think we're, we're all missing a, a trick uh, by simply ignoring the possibility of using copy. Um, in print advertising. Um, and of course, you know, one of the things I love is typography. Um, without copy, there's no typography. So it, it's a string to our bow that I think we should consider um, more than we do currently. Next slide, please. And this, this is a great one. Um, you know, he used to say, he used to sit there through the night working away, trying to make the ad look interesting. And then when the writer, his copywriter, came in the next morning, that person will be shocked. Um, I mean, that's a great thing to achieve. If you, if you can shock the person you're working with, or, or your boss, your creative director, um, that's quite an achievement. Um, because if they're shocked, then the person that the ad is aimed at will also be shocked. And if the consumer is shocked, then I'm pretty sure that they'll remember that piece of communication. Um, so let's, let's try and shock people with our work. That's a very good ambition to have, I think. Next slide. An ad should not look like an ad. Um, who on earth buys a newspaper or looks at a website or you know, looks at the TV wanting to look at the ads, except perhaps a few of us here? Hardly anyone. Real people don't do that. Um, so why do all ads look like this? Look the same. You know, this gets back to my comment about um, uh, advertising award winners. You know, that, that there's a kind of way of a kind of received wisdom about how to do an ad that's going to win an award these days. Um, maybe we shouldn't do the obvious things. Ads certainly shouldn't look like ads. Then people are more likely to notice them and more likely to remember what they say. Uh, next slide, please. I mean, this is an incredible thing. I mean, most people wouldn't consider this. I mean, he, he, he did a, a major campaign for Avis in, in the US, and it didn't even have a logo on. Um, I mean, I've tried this a few times with kind of mixed success, and I'll talk about those in a minute, and I'll explain my reasoning, uh, and kind of what went right, what went wrong. Um, but, you know, consider the kind of inconceivable. Does, does an ad always need a logo? Usually yes, but sometimes maybe not. Uh, next slide, please. I mean, this God is in the details. He quoted uh, an architect, uh, Mies van der Rohe. I've got, I've got, I've got a theory about uh, one of the things I think about art direction is, is that it communicates in a millisecond um, if something is worth looking at. 
Um, you can tell uh, when in a printout, so the, the, the millisecond you turn the page, if someone's put some love into the way that that piece of communication uh, looks, um, then it kind of communicates subliminally um, that this is worth checking out. There's something valuable here, something interesting. And I think that's a big part of art direction. Um, and, and the details, you know, the precise spacing, the typography, uh, the choice of colors, things like that, layout decisions. It just tells you something's going to be interesting, worth looking at. Next slide, please. All right, I'm going to talk about some work now. Um, these are press ads. And these are press ads, this is a campaign for uh, that ran in the UK, and it's for a, a chain of bookstores, a really big, the biggest chain of bookstores um, in, in the UK. And the, the brand is called Waterstones. Um, and to me, what I like about these is they don't look like ads, and, and yet this kind of, it's a very coherent campaign. So this is just a page, it's a white page in a magazine or a newspaper, and there's a book on it. Um, and when you think about it, so why, why do these look like that? Well, it's just basically a series of headlines and pictures. It's a very kind of conventional kind of structure for a print ad. There's a logo, there's a headline, there's a picture. And yet it doesn't look like an ad. So the strategy here, I don't think we'll, we'll have time to talk about each, each headline, but the strategy is, is very simple. This was done in about the late 90s. And the strategy is we love books. It's a very simple strategy. So they, they were the brand leader, uh, and they were basically trying to grow the market for books. They, this is a series of ads, and each one is another reason why books are great. And so the ne next slide, please. This is the first one. Um, it's about the fact that evil dictators try to burn books. It's a very kind of simple insight, and you know, therefore, if bad people don't like books, then books must be great, is the reasoning. And, and we started with the headline. Um, I, I wrote these answers with a writer called Nigel Roberts, and we, we sat down and said, well, how, how is this going to look? Um, we took a book. It's about burning books, so let's burn the book. Uh, once we decided that all the ads went on books, you know, and the reason for that, of course, is it's an ad for a, a chain of bookshops, and when you think about it, ads have the same elements as books. You know, an ad has a headline, um, usually a picture, and a logo. And books also have headlines, pictures, and logos. So if you didn't ad for a book, a bookshop, why not make it look like a book? Very kind of simple and obvious when you think about it. So this, this sub, the subject of this ad was, was about um, evil dictators burning books. So we stuck the headline as the title page on a book, and we burned the book. And then we, we took a picture of the book, Put the, put the logo on the spine, took a picture of the book on a white background, and that's the ad. So next one, please. And it's the same principle. The whole campaign was, was based on that. So th this one is, is um, a really nice line. It says, you can take a book anywhere and vice versa. So it's just a kind of dreamy picture on the front. And uh, this time we just put the, uh, the headline on the spine. Uh, next one. Another nice line, the most common tool for escape from prison is, isn't a shovel. It's very hard to read these on, on a screen, of course, but... And one thing you'll notice is, as you see the campaign developing, is that the design mimics kind of book cover design. Um, all the headlines are in different typefaces. Uh, we use different colours. You know, sometimes there's a, an illustration on the cover. Let's look at the next one. Uh, the next one. You know, sometimes you just hand lettering. That's a book, uh, that's a, an ad about um, children's books. So it's it's kind of executed in the style of a child's book, a child's illustration uh, with hand lettering. So there's no there's no standard typeface. Um, sometimes it's illustration. Sometimes it's photography. Uh, next one, please. Uh, next one. Sometimes it's just typography. That's a book about coffee table books. And the headline is just written out of coffee rings. Uh, next one. Uh, next one. So they're all different, but they're all the same. And the reason they're all the same is there's a consistent layout. I think within an ad campaign, there needs to be some, what I call glue. 
Um, and when big kind of branding agencies rebrand big companies and produce guidelines documents, they always helpfully um, have a section on advertising. And we all get these documents and say, this is what the ads look like. Uh, the same was true of Waterstones. And in kind of Helmut Crohn style, I, I kind of quite bravely rejected it all. I sat down with the client and I said, this is crazy. You know, because there was a template, you know, it said an ad looks like this. There's a logo there. We use this typeface. So we use a lot of black. And, you know, I, I felt that in this instance it was a straight jacket. So I said, let's, let's create some different glue that gives us more freedom and makes the ads more exciting and therefore more memorable. And so the glue here is everything's on a book that sits in white space. And then on the book, we can do whatever we want. We can dramatize the idea um, with, 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 you know, as expressively as we want, with as much freedom as we want. And the reason we want to do that is it makes the ad more memorable. Um, and you know, you could do a hundred of these and it would be a really coherent campaign, but it would be more memorable and um, certainly a lot more fun to put together than just a kind of boring, uh, rigid straitjacket. So the Waterstones. Um, look at that ad in the top right, and just remember that one. That's an ad made out of, uh, the, the picture there is just made out of a dot screen, like if you look at a newspaper and uh, see a picture and it's made up of, of dots. Okay. Next picture, please. Next slide. I have that Waterstones ad pinned on the wall, and this, this is a, uh, a poster for a Sony PlayStation a video game. Um, at the time, they were using a, um, a branding device of, of the, the Sony PlayStation symbols, which, which is what they are. So there's a, a circle, a square, a cross, and a triangle. Uh, next slide. And that, that's what I did with them. It's a poster. And what, what I think is interesting about that, there's no logo on it. The symbols act as the logo. But what's interesting about posters, I always thought, was you, the viewing distance changes. So sometimes you see a poster from a long way away, and sometimes you see it really close. So from a distance, we had kind of excited, uh, staring eyes. And then just go back, please. Uh, close up, you get the branding. And I always thought that was, in, I got that idea because I had the water stands uh, that used a similar technique pinned on the wall. Um, but that's how that works. Okay, next slide, and next. This is another campaign. This is a campaign for an art gallery in London called the Tate's Gallery. And the strategy behind these ads is art changes the way you see the world, which is quite a nice insight, uh, a kind of truth about art and, you know, one of the great reasons for going to, going to a, an art gallery. Um, so, next slide. So that's an ad. That's uh, what we call um, a conquer. It's, it grows on a tree. It's a seed on a tree, and it, it was opening up. And so it's a seed, but it looks like something else. It looks like an eye. Um, and, and the type uh, in the bottom right, bottom left, says a conquer noticed after a visit to the Tate. Um, and all the camp, all the ads in this campaign uh, took that took that that kind of structure. So next, please. That's a rock and it looks like um, a nude. Next. Those are bean sprouts, little sprouting uh, seeds, look like swans. Next. And you can see the whole campaign is, is kind of one, a picture of one thing that looks like something else. It's about noticing things in other things. It's about being more observant, being more imaginative, and, and art help, seeing art helping you do that. So why, uh, next slide please, why do these ads look the way they do? Why is the layout like that? Next. Issue is a magazine that homeless people sell um, in the UK, in cities, and it kind of allows them to start working and get their lives back together. That's kind of what it's about. So each of these ads is basically a story about you know, how that works. Um, the first thing you'll notice is there's no logo on this. This is the time where I, I kind of knocked the logo off the ads. And I did that because this is a, ch a charity campaign. And charity campaigns have a kind of cliché, certainly in the UK, they have a kind of cliché the way that they look. They always look a little bit uh, grungy. They have a kind of um, a picture of a victim 
or a kind of really outrageously, you know, a, a picture that has someone suffering in some way. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted it to make it look different. So I wanted it to make it look like it was, if it's in a magazine, this is a double page spread, I wanted it to look like it was part of the editorial bit of the magazine. And an easy way to do that, to make it not look like an ad, is to take the logo off. Um, the other thing to say about this is, um, I think the copy is really kind of terrific. Really great, great copy. And when I read it, I didn't write this, uh, Nigel Roberts wrote these, uh, these ads. I thought the copy is so good. Um, how do I make sure that people read it? And an obvious way to do that, I thought, was let's make the copy as big as the headline. So the headline is bottom left, um, and the copy is on the right-hand page. And I just made the copy as, as big as I could, because I really wanted people to read it. And I thought, it, when, once I've done that, I thought it looks interesting. Um, and then the pictures um, in this campaign aren't pictures at all. Uh, this campaign, uh, you know, they didn't, they're a charity, they had no money, and we put this together for nothing. And those objects were all just put on a, a flatbed scanner in the studio at uh, TBWA, where, where I was working at the time. So they're just scans, and it just goes to show you, you know, that, that costs absolutely no money to put together. Um, the time was set on, on my Apple uh, Mac, and the pictures were just scans. Um, you got them DMAD, and you know, I was really, really pleased with them. I think they're very strong ads um, that don't look like ads. Okay, next, please. Just go through them. Just quick, let's just go through these fairly quickly. Unfortunately, we don't have time to, to read them, but uh, wonderful copy uh, by Nigel. Really kind of quite powerful stuff that you don't tend to usually get in ads. Okay, next. This is a poster. Um, one of my big things is, is where does graphic design end and where does art direction start? There's, there's a huge uh, blurring of the boundaries. Um, I have a company in London called This Is Real Arts and we, we do just as much design work as advertising. Um, for, for me, it's all, it's all one thing. Um, I don't think advertising people make their work, design their work sufficiently well often. And I don't think graphic designers have good enough ideas sufficiently on them. And um, I, I like to put the best of both worlds together. So this is a poster uh, for a talk by, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Fletcher Forbes Gill, it's a wonderful kind of creative company in London uh, in the 60s and 70s. And um, they all came together, the founders, to give a talk. And it's just a, a kind of beautiful picture, but a, a very simple graphic idea of th three speech bubbles uh, using overprinting to overlap. It just kind of makes the point of three people giving a talk. Next slide, please. This is a campaign that I've just done. It's for a, a, a trade union in, in the UK for musicians, called the Musicians Union. Uh, so, so why do these ads look the way they do? Uh, next slide, please. There's eight of them in the campaign. And again, they're all similar but they're all different, and, and that's a technique that I like to use a lot. So these are basically just uh, simple testimonial ads there. Each ad features a musician, and in the copy he says uh, why, he's, why he thinks the Musicians' Union is a good thing. So it's a very simple kind of structure for a campaign. It's quite nice copywriting. But what, why do they look the way they look? Well, in any testimonial ad, you, you kind of tend to get a picture of the person giving the testimonial, and then some, some short copy. And because these are musicians, I thought there's, there's a wonderful kind of heritage of, of kind of music photography, and I wanted to kind of tap into that. Um, and a lot of it is black and white. Um, you know, if you think about great photographers like, um, you know, Annie Leibovitz in America, she did a wonderful book about um, uh, Rolling Stones tour in the 70s, and that was all in black and white, brilliant shots. And similarly, in the UK, there's, there's a great heritage in music magazines of, of wonderful black and white photography. And I just wanted to, to tap into that. And to, to kind of take that to um, its logical conclusion, I thought, well, let's not only use black and white photography, but let's use the uh, contact sheets 
uh, that you get in large contact sheets. So all the little details around it, again, it's just a reference to the, the kind of heritage of, of, of music photography and, and a way of dramatizing that. Um, and then the, the type, um, I made really small. So the headlines, you know, with the big issue, I made the type really big because, uh, you know, I thought that looked interesting and relevant. But for these, I thought, well, let's go the other way. Let's, let's, instead of making the body copy the same size as the headline, let's make the headline the same size as the body copy. And what that achieves, I mean, it's very legible in, in a magazine when you look at it, but it just glues two elements that would otherwise have been different together. And, and another very useful trick when, when you do layouts is to reduce the number of elements on the page. So um, just gluing the headline to the body copy does that. Uh, next slide, please. So let's just go through these one by one fairly quickly. Next. And you can see there's a kind of grid going on that's created by the uh, contact sheet elements. But all the elements move around. So sometimes the picture's on the left, sometimes it's on the right, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. The logo moves around. And yet it's a really distinctive look for a campaign. Next. 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 Okay, so that's those. Let's keep going. Next. Right, this is another campaign. This is for um, another charity called the um, RSPCA, it's an uh, animal cruelty charity. Uh, did these ads uh, with Peter um, uh, at, at AMV in London. Um, again, I didn't want them to look like kind of depressing, grungy charity ads. Um, this is a campaign um, designed to encourage people to buy well, free range eggs. I don't know if you understand this. A lot of eggs are produced with um, hens in, in cages. Uh, we were campaigning against them. Um, and we took the view that people aren't really interested in charity ads, they're much more interested in food. So we thought, let's, let's not appeal to people who are interested in seeing a picture of a very depressed hen in a cage. Let's, let's appeal to people who are interested in food. So we showed beautiful food photography of eggs, of course. Um, and on the right, there's, again, there's copy. Uh, so how do we make that look? Well, we, we took the view that it's about, you know, when you're deciding which type of eggs to buy, so the decision you make is kind of in the shop at the till almost. So let's just set the body copy like a till receipt in a shop, and then it's as simple as that. Um, again, we use the argument that um, these should look more like editorial than advertising. And we took the, uh, the copy mentions the RSPCA, but we left the logo off. Um, what happened with this, halfway through, halfway through the, um, the, the campaign, um, I thought someone very senior at the RSPCA um, saw them and thought, oh no, we, need, we really need to put the logo on that. And we did put the logo on, so about halfway through the print run. And um, it just went down the bottom, it looked fine. But I, I thought it was kind of more powerful with it. So, um, not everyone would agree with me, but, but I thought it looked more like editorial. and. Uh, it was more likely to be read. Next, please. Let's go through these one by one. Again, just different typefaces in the, uh, they just look like different receipts. I mean, just goes to show you don't always have to use the same typeface throughout a campaign. You can use other techniques to glue everything together. Um, it's hardly ever done but um, it's possible. Okay, next. And this is for the same client. We did this about six months later. And this is about um, factory production of chicken, uh, you know, in, in really bad conditions, uh, like 50,000 chickens in a big concrete shed. Um, and because they're an animal welfare charity, they were campaigning against this. And we did some, we did some uh, lines, some headlines, and, uh, you know, how do you make this look? Well, you move it on from, from the last campaign. It looks entirely different. And we took the graphic language of kind of industrial packaging. You know, the big, uh, big kind of packing base, the graphics you get on them um, at the back of supermarkets. Uh, and we just screen printed the, this kind of graphic style. We incorporated the headlines, screen printed it on cardboard boxes and then photographed them. 
and that to me seems like appropriate, you know, quite brutal um, art direction that was relevant to the subject matter. So let's go through these. And again, they look, you can tell they're all related to each other and yet they're all very different. You know, there's different typefaces, the elements move around the page, um, but it's still coherent art direction, it's still very much a campaign. And to me, it's about getting that balance right. Um, it's very easy to fall into a kind of default received wisdom that, you know, the picture always goes there, headline goes there in that typeface, and then the logo always goes there. You don't have to do that. Next. This is a campaign where there's, there's a lot of difference. This is for a, um, a store in London that sells uh, wine. It's for, they're called Obbins, and uh, so it's, I don't know what you call it, a liquor store or a wine merchant, as we call it. Um, and what glues all these together? This, this really, I think, a neat campaign. You know, the look of it has been bounded by brackets. And the brackets are pretty wide here, but there's still something uh, that glues it all together. So, you know, the colours change, the type changes. Um, what doesn't change is the illustration style. So, in this instance, there's one illustrator. I've worked with one illustrator on all of these ads. Uh, let's go, let's look at them one by one. Next one. You know, that's, that's, that's a double in a magazine. Um, I was just mad. If, you, if you're flicking through a magazine and you come across that, I think you're going to stop. You're going to say, what on earth is this? Um, which brings me to a really important point. If you're doing a press ad, your starting point is a, a blank page. And it's your job, um, as an art director or as a creative team, to make that page the most impactful thing in the magazine. And actually, I think that's quite an easy thing to do. If you look at most magazines, they're kind of rather boring. Um, why not make a page look like that? Um, the only thing that stops us is the assumption that ads look a certain way. Uh, and ads, rather than being kind of things that get in the way uh, when you're flicking through a magazine, they, they, should, they, should, they could be the things that really, really stand out. And it's actually our job, everyone in this room, to make sure that that's the case. Um, so next slide, please. You know, it's the same, same illustration style, but uh, everything else changes. So that's got, you know, completely different typography. Next one. Again, different again. Next one. You know, that one, we actually drew the ad on a real Opens receipt. That someone might, why, why not? It's just kind of a slightly surprising but relevant thing to do. And we, we reproduce the headline um, on the left, on the back of a receipt, and incorporated the logo that way. It's just kind of taking the normal elements that you find in an ad and just doing something different with them, something surprising. You know, it's this thing about Helmut Brown saying, if, you know, if you can shock people in the agency, then, you know, you're going to surprise consumers. They're more likely to stop um, and remember the ad. Next slide, please. So that's, that's all things. Next. This is um, another campaign I did at AMV. Uh, behind AMV, there's a church. And one day the vicar came into the agency and he said, can you do some ads? And, you know, it's kind of, you dream of those moments. And, and of course we said yes. I think actually Peter briefed me on this. He came into my office and, and, and said, can, can, you, can you work on this? And we had a very simple idea in that religion makes you feel better. What else makes you feel better? Um, you know, if you're a bit down or not well, um, pharmaceuticals, you know, drugs. And so let's put the two together. So the next slide. It's just very kind of very kind of left field campaign this, um, but I always liked it. It's just kind of taking the the graphic language of drugs packaging and then just talking about religion on it. Next slide. Next. Let's just go through these. Next. Again, I don't think they were like ads. Uh, next. So that's that. Okay, keep going. And then sometimes you have one idea and then you just kind of, you can't help but use it again. So those, those previous ads used cutter guides, you know, the graphics of cutter guides for packaging. And then about a couple of years after that, actually, I got a brief for a company called JKR in London. 
And their graphic designers, and they, they exclusively do packaging. And these were uh, business to business ads in um, a magazine called Marketing Week. And they wanted to do some ads, and I just couldn't think of a better kind of graphic approach than using the cut cutter guides in, um, uh, from packaging. So, next slide. Um, and I, I worked with a wonderful uh, copywriter called Richard Foster uh, on these ads uh, in London. Um, and again, it's, it's really kind of conventional elements, you know, there's, there's a logo, an end line, and, uh, you know, copy, headline. But it, the page doesn't look normal, it doesn't look like a normal ad. So, uh, next. And again, I use different cutter guides. These are real cutter guides for di different types of packs uh, that you get in on supermarket shelves. Uh, keep going, let's go through these. And you see all the elements move around, and it just keeps it interesting, but it's still a really kind of a coherent, really, really coherent campaign. One of the things I'm going to stay on this one, if you just go back, thanks. It, one of the things about this that I really liked was it's basically a black and white campaign, and yeah, it's not, it's a colour page, but um, you look at the, the CMYK um, printer guides that you often get on packaging, and uh, that's the only little bit of colour on there, and I thought that was interesting, just kind of having, um, maybe it's self-indulgent, I don't know, but it interests me just having a tiny bit of colour on a black and white page. Again, it just kind of catches your eye. Uh, next. So that's that. Next. This is um, a campaign for something called the Prince's Trust. And it's, uh, it's a charity in the UK run by um, a member of the royal family called Prince Charles. And it helps um, disadvantaged young people find their feet in life. You know, people who've been having problems um, and it helps them, it helps them set up businesses and things like that. And this was a, a very unusual brief in, in that they came to us and they, they, they were very specific in what they wanted. They actually wanted to tell the story of real people who'd been helped by the Prince's Trust. And, you know, quite a prescriptive starting point. And we sat down and we had to think about it. And we said, well, what are the stories? And we, we did a lot of research. We read um, a lot of um, kind of real stories from real people. And we thought, yeah, there's, there's some great stories here. So there's some great ads. And again, I wanted to, um, if you look at the, the, these uh, five of the ads we did, again, I think that, that looks like pretty coherent. It look, looks, there's a campaign style. You reckon, once you've seen one and you see another one, you'll see the relation. And yet they're all very different. Um, and again, it's, it's kind of referring back to editorial design rather than cliched advertising design. And there's a grid here, there's a, a kind of really, you know, it's, it's, it's pure graphic design in a way, the layout. There's, there's a grid, it's like when you're putting a magazine together. So we created a grid, um, we just kind of arranged the elements on that grid, but we made sure that when we did one ad, we didn't reproduce the elements in the same place. And again, that, for me, that just keeps it interesting. Uh, the other thing to say about this campaign is, you know, unlike a lot of ads, there's more than one picture on the page. You know, who, who wrote the rule that you just have to have one visual? Simple is nearly always really, really good, of course. But sometimes you can break that rule, and, and there's a very good reason for breaking that rule here, in that we, we're telling someone's story. And sometimes, you know, a story can be told in a more compelling way uh, by using more than one picture. And if you think about great um, editorial in magazines, you know, picture stories, uh, photojournalism, they nearly always have, you know, a whole string of pictures to tell a story. And I just wanted to pick up on that and try and, you know, show that there's someone's life, uh, you know, referencing different bits of someone's life in, in these stories, in these ads. Um, so, yeah, and, and then why are they black and white? You know, who shoots black and white photography these days? No one. Everything is shot in colour. And these ads were also shot in colour. And I made them black and white for two reasons. Firstly, I thought it looked interesting. It was unusual, so it probably might need to stand out more. But also, um, if you have more than one picture on a page, it, they glue together graphically a lot better if they're all if they're all black and white. You know, you don't get kind of um, distracting color clashes and things like that. So there's a practical reason 
and also an aesthetic reason for, for, for making the photographs black and white. Okay, next. Let's just go through these. And you just, as, as we go through them, just notice how the elements move around the page. So it still looks like a, a coherent campaign, but all, all, the, all the headlines, headlines always in a different place. Logo moves around as well. Okay, thanks. I like that because it's so strange. Like that layer. Okay, next. That's a very simple ad. Um, it's about kids copying adult behaviour, and it's about road safety. It's, it's the uh, a government. The government in, in the UK runs these ads. Uh, so literally, it's, um, the concept is about kids copying grown-up behaviour. So why not have a kid copying the headline? Um, again, it's just, it just looks unusual when you uh, when you see that poster uh, or, or see it as a press ad when you turn the page. Okay, next. This is a similar type of thing. Again, it's uh, next. This is a, a drink driving. It's a campaign in the UK by the government. Uh, next slide. It's to stop people drinking and driving is a very simple idea. It's a family, a happy family snapshot destroyed by drink. Um, next, I'll just go through this. And if you look down at the bottom right hand corner. Um, I hate that logo, but we, obviously we had to use it, it's a government logo, and I found it quite therapeutic just destroying the logo by a drink as well. It's a nice little detail, you know, that's our direction, that's, um, uh, I'm, I'm amazed they let us do that, but they did. And, um, yeah, next. And next. Okay, keep going. So that's that. Okay, next campaign. Oh, that's... Um, you can offer, you can do good stuff in surprising places. This is the a seat in a London taxi, and I don't know how many of you've been to London. If you ever get in a taxi, you get terrible, terrible ads in taxis, and um, I finally managed to do a good one. Uh, or at least I, I quite like it. You know, simple graphic. Um, again, really nice headline. Uh, Nigel Roberts wrote. Uh, and it's just nice to do a simple, clean graphic ad where usually you get terrible ads. There's no rule that says every taxi seat ad has to look appalling. So it was nice to do one. Okay, next. Okay, th this is a campaign for a museum in London. Um, and it's a printing museum uh, it's about typography and printing. And it's called the Type Museum. And what's great about them is they have. Um, a collection of wonderful um, typefaces, you know, letterpress, mostly letterpress typography. Um, and it's a very simple idea, this. It's, it's, you know, they call typefaces, so why don't make faces out of the type? You know, it's a kind of obvious, simple idea. Um, but I, I, I did, again, I did this at AMV. I did this campaign because, you know, I, I, would, I thought I'd really, really enjoy working on it. And, and I did, and so I kind of did this on Sundays for several months, just kind of scanning um, various typefaces from their collection and, and rearranging them on the computer, just kind of making faces. And, um, you know, uh, this obviously wasn't a huge budget campaign. I was, I was working on massive, massive campaigns at the same time. But I would encourage all of you to work on stuff like this. You know, always, always have like three or four or five things on the go. Um, the smaller it is, the more likely it is to not get screwed up, you know, to happen, not get blown out by the client. And I view things like this as, as quite therapeutic. You know, they, they kind of keep me sane sometimes. If I'm working on a huge kind of global campaign, it's kind of getting compromised by the client. You know, this didn't. It, it remained very pure. Uh, had a very good relationship with the client, and you know. They happened, and that's what they look like. So let's go through these one by one. I think as a creative person, it's, it's good to do stuff like this occasionally. So a very simple idea, but you know, tight faces made out of time. Okay, next. Oh, this is some more. Um, they used to do um, open, an open day, four a year, every season. So
So, uh, next slide. Again, it's keeping going on the theme of making pictures out of time. So this is uh, spring, the spring open day. So we had S's, did these call my photography. Um, and, and everything, you had to have that typeface. Everything in the corporate guidelines was really, really prescriptive. And yet I still quite like this solution there, the graphic solution. Um, they wouldn't dream of allowing that much white space or having it, but the guidelines didn't, because it's kind of so unusual, the guidelines didn't even mention it. So I think the moral here is even within, within the most rigid guidelines, you can still do kind of slightly interesting stuff. Um, you know, I always quite like these ads. They're, they're about pensions and investments and, and insurance, about, about stuff that could happen in the future. So the idea here was to show the same person um, kind of in, in the present and in the future. Um, wonderful photography uh, by a photographer called Alistair Thane. And these aren't actually, um, next slide, these aren't actually one person. That's two people, that's, that's a father and a son. Next. That's a grandfather and a grandson. And, and there's a very, go back, just stay on that one. Sorry, go back. There's very little retouching there. It's kind of quite spooky how um, different generations of the same family often, you put them together like that, it could be, of course be the same person. Okay, next. And next. It's a very simple campaign uh, for an estate agent. Again, that's again using expressive typography. Uh, each one in a, is a quote about what's good about home. So estate agents are people who sell houses um, in the UK, we call them estate agents. Next, let's just go through these. So that's an L like a keyhole, just really, really simple. That's an expression, so arrows pointing for east and west about location. Next. These are house numbers, but rearranged to look like letters. So there's a four, a zero, a three, and a six. Uh, spelling home. Okay, next. So that's that campaign. Keep going. This is about a gov another government campaign about um, cell phones, mobile phones, and about they s telling pe thieves that they, they, can be, they, can, they can be blocked when they've been stolen. And the idea here was just to pick up on the notion of the little pictures you make when you sometimes, when you send text, and it's, it's taking that to a, a ridiculous extreme. So the whole ad is basically made out of text. Um, uh, and it's one giant, so next, it's one giant textbook. Um, so it's all one typeface. Uh, keep going. So it's just uh, the same size, the same typeface, and, and the whole ad is, is made out of one block of text, uh, all done for real. Okay, keep going. And again, it doesn't look like an ad. That's an interesting way of doing a picture in an ad, but relevant. Okay, next. This is a campaign for a, a human rights charity called Reprieve, and they're a legal charity. And they, uh, they're global, actually. They're based in the UK, and they help, um, they help people in Guantanamo Bay. They help people on death row in the States. Uh, people all over the world. Uh, next, and the, the reason these ads look like this is, is is kind of related to what they do. They're all lawyers, and they spend their lives wading through official forms. Uh, when Peter and I actually wanted to come here this week, we had to fill in many forms like this to get our Russian visas. So I, I know what they go through day, uh, every day, and so the art direction comes from their their day to day experience. And why not make the ad? look like a, an official form. Okay, next. Just run through these. That's the way they look. Oh, the other thing to say is um, a sense of the pictures. Go back. That, that There's a horrendous picture in that ad of someone who's been on hunger strike um, and lost half his body weight. And I was very tempted to put the ad, put the picture in the ad, and I thought the ad may get banned. A magazine may refuse to run the ad with such a horrendous picture in it. Uh, the picture in the next ad is also uh, terrible. Um, but I thought, why not censor it? And then maybe in the viewer's mind, they would imagine the picture to be even worse than it is. And I thought that was an interesting thing to play with. Okay, next. And next. 
So that's that. Just okay, keep going. It's a very simple app. And even really, really simple ones like that. It's a giant light bulb. Uh, next. And when someone walks underneath it, it comes on because it acts like a security light. And um, for me, this, this is, you know, what an art director can bring to, even when it's a wonderful um, established campaign like The Economist, there's still graphic, interesting graphic and visual tricks you can bring to the party. And that's me finished. Thank you. Next.